Hi there, my name is Pamela and I breed British Shorthair Cats in Perth, Western Australia. I've been breeding and exhibiting my cats since 2004 and I'm even a cat show judge. I'm passionate about the cat fancy and I want to share my knowledge and experiences with you so that you can enjoy your hobby as much as I do. That's what the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast is all about. In this series, I'm taking a moment to answer some of the most regular cat breeding questions I get asked every day. Hopefully the answers will help you too. I'm also covering some topics that are important to new cat breeders so that you can start out on the right foot. Some of the episodes are scripted and some of them are off the cuff. The audio is both good and bad. But the main thing is the information and I'm sharing it in whatever way I can with you in mind. Well, I must apologise today because my voice is a little bit croaky. I've had a cold for a week and a half now and I haven't been able to record anything. So I thought now that I'm slightly better, I'd get on to some of the questions I've been asked by people and record a podcast for you. Today, I wanted to look at um, a question that got asked of me recently. And that was, what can you do to get your girls to come into season? So what can you do to get your girls to call? And it's an interesting question and it depends on quite a few things. And the answer is basically you just have to let nature take its course. But I want to tell you some of the things that influence that actually happening. One of the things that you need to know about is whether your cat is a seasonal breed or not. Now, by seasonal breed, it's really interesting in the cat world and I'm not sure the reason for it. But breeds are actually uh, divided into two groups, really. Cats that breed all year round and cats that breed seasonally. Now, if you think about other animals, um, think about things like sheep. Sheep all have their babies. You go out um, in spring. If you're driving in an area like we are, we're in a semi-rural area, the sheep have all got little baby lambs chasing after them and it's really cute. They breed seasonally. When it's spring, um, they have their lambing season. Whereas cats, cats are a bit different because some cats are like that and some cats aren't. Now, seasonal breeds in the cat world are things like British Shorthairs, Persians, um, probably Selkirk Rexes as well. And cats that are all year round breeders are breeds that they're almost, um, they're more mat- early maturing breeds as well. Breeds like Burmese, breeds like Siamese, breeds like Abyssinian. So depending on the breed of cat you have, your cat will either be coming into season in the warmer months of the year or they'll be coming into season all year round. So seasonality has a lot to do with it. And what this means for me personally as someone who has a seasonal breed, I breed British short hairs, is that we have kittens during the warmer months but then in winter we have the winter off. And during winter, when it's cold and rainy and wet, the cats are just acting like, the girls are basically acting like pet cats, like d sex cats. They're just hanging out and um, being normal. And then as soon as they get a whiff of spring coming, they all jump into action and turn back into breeding cats again. There is the odd exception, and this year I did actually have a late litter that was born during winter, and they're actually about to go. It's about to turn into spring here. The timing of the year at the moment is we're about to go into spring, and I have kittens that are about to go to their new homes, which is a really unusual thing, but you will have the exception to the rule. So even though you might have a seasonal breed that only normally has kittens and comes into season in the warmer months, you might have a cat that decides to do its own thing and um, call at the end of summer, call during autumn, call during winter and then have kittens in an odd time of the year. Now, if you have an, an all year round breed, you don't have any of these concerns. I think that those breeds also can still be affected by the effects of spring and they will tend to have more, um, come into season more and have kittens more in that side of the year. But they will call all year round and they will call during winter and they will have kittens during winter and that's pretty normal for them. So working out what type of breed you have, whether you have a seasonal breed or not, is important. And it's something that a lot of people don't know about. I know as a breeder of a seasonal breed, we get queries from people. um, I'm trying to find a kitten. I'm trying to find a kitten. No one has kittens. And you have to say to them, well, no one has kittens because it's the dead of winter. 
and they're just not being born except for those weird random cats like I've had this year. So um, for seasonal breeds, that's an issue. For all year round breeds, you've got them all year round. So what affects cats in terms of when they start to call? One of the things that's really interesting is that cats are triggered by the length of the day. We often think it's to do with the weather getting warmer, but it's actually to do with light. Um, they know um, when the days are getting longer. They know when it's starting to, that's the trigger for them to say spring is coming, the good weather's coming, the weather that's coming that's going to make it a bit safer for you to have your kittens is coming. And that's what triggers them to come into season. So day length is really interesting. We don't think about it too much, but we know that in winter it's shorter and we know that in summer it's longer. But it's actually a certain time of year when it actually changes. So coming up until June, um, towards June, the days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And I'm talking about in Australia. So if you're in the other hemisphere, it's going to be the opposite to this. But as um, the days get shorter and shorter and shorter coming up to June, and then there's this special day, this special day of the year, which is the 22nd of June. And that just happens to be Damien's birthday. So I can remember it really easily. On the 22nd of June in Australia, that's the day that we have the winter solstice. And the winter solstice is the day of the year where we have the shortest daylight. The summer solstice is the opposite of that where we have the longest amount of sunlight. But on the winter solstice, we have the shortest amount of sunlight. So that means from the 22nd onwards, every single day is having a little bit more daylight, a little bit more daylight, a little bit more daylight leading up until spring and summer. And whilst we don't really notice it that much and we just sort of one day go, oh, it's, it's a lot, it's, it's brighter, it's, it's, yeah, the winter weather's gone. The cats know. I reckon they know every minute that they're getting of extra daylight. So what happens is once it gets to a certain point, it triggers them to come into season and they start calling. <clears throat> so they know that daylight um, trigger. And that's what you need to think about. So if you've got a seasonal breed and it's not yet the 22nd of June and you want your girls to call, you just have to wait. Once you get past the 22nd of June, there's a couple of other factors that do come into play. And these will actually also influence all year round breeds. One of them is warmth and light. So warmth in terms of... Um, if they're in a warmer climate, if they're in um, an air con if not air conditioned, if they're in um, your cattery and it's warmer in there than it is outside, um, if you actually have heating on for them, if you have warm beds on for them, that kind of thing. Now to give you an example, I've got girls that are outside in an outside pen and they've got a cubby with lots of cozy beds. They're not cold, they're quite happy, but they're not calling yet. I have your maker in the barn, like um, acting like a princess. She's got a lovely heated bed that she's been living on. She was the first cat to start calling. She's also got more light in there because the barn has lights on. And those lights, we normally put them on in the morning, but they'll stay on till later in the evening after we've fed everyone before we turn them off. So she's had extra light and extra warmth compared to the girls that are outside in an outside pen. And even though it's only been a little bit of difference, it did mean that she was the first girl to call this season. She had a call and then she stopped and we're all good. So warmth and light can definitely affect them. If you want a girl to come into season a bit sooner um, after the solstice or if you've got a season, an all year round girl, you can make sure she's in a warmer, lighter area. Now, some people say that they just leave the lights on 24-7. I don't like that. I don't think that's right. I think that that's maybe a bit mean to your cats. Cats like people, they um, have a day and night sort of thing. Um, we need to make sure that we're mimicking their natural environment and keeping the lights on 24-7 just doesn't seem right. So keeping them on maybe a little bit longer is okay, but not keeping them on all the time. Um, and that light can be, um, you know, in our barn we have fluorescent, uh, not fluorescent, we have LED um, lights in the, in the roof and everything. It's pretty bright in there. The sun comes in through the windows as well. I'm not talking about setting up, you know, big lights and baking your cats in lights to try and bring them into season. I just think leaving a normal household style light on is fine. 
and having them warm in terms of they're not in a outside in a cold pen they're inside in a cattery they're inside in your house that kind of um, warmth not having a heater on and baking them and then you just have to wait for them to come in some other things that can influence them as well and this will influence both seasonal and all year round breeding cats is other cats one thing you'll notice when you start to have a few girls if is if one starts they all start they tend to cycle in groups and they'll come into season all together and they'll actually start you know playmating each other it gets a little bit rude sometimes and you're like oh gosh i don't want any children to see what's going on um, they will all get in on the act and um, you'll have all of the girls calling at one time and then they'll come off call and then come back into call all together as well you have one or two that don't join in with the crowd and do their own thing and that's fine as well but having other cats come into season at the, around them can absolutely influence other cats now you make a came into season she was in the barn but she was the only entire female in the barn so she was in there happily meowing away and calling out but she didn't actually have any influence on the other cats the cats that are out in the pens um, just recently because it is heading towards spring here now those cats did start calling probably last week and I could hear that there were several of them calling. So they influenced each other. It started off as just one of them and then they all sort of joined in. <clears throat> so having other girls around your girls can influence them coming into season. The other thing that can influence a girl coming into season is boys because boys are always on the hunt for girls. They're always spraying their area to perfume it, to say, hey, ladies, I'm here. They're always crying out to lady cats. And when the girls start calling, the boys start calling too. They start calling back to them. So one of the ways that you can get a girl to call maybe a little bit sooner is to put her in a pen next to a boy. Let her know that the boy's there. Um, let her be close to the stud cat so that she can start um, he can start calling out to woo her and she can start responding to that. So that'll have a bit of a trigger effect on them too. I don't want you to put them together because you don't want them to go together when they're not ready. And also you want to know exactly when you do put them together and when they mate so that you can know when the kittens are coming down to like that three-day window that I've talked about many times before. And if you want to know more about that, you can actually, um, I've done some other videos on things like that as well. So that's um, getting other cats to help them, um, both with girls and with boys. Then the other thing that you can do is just wait because they'll come into season when they come into season. And for every cat that you have to wait and wait and wait for, There'll be another cat that comes into season at eight months old. They're not ready to be mated and they scream and scream and scream until they get to 10 months old and you can possibly mate them. So it's um, one thing to be waiting on a cat to call, but it's a lot worse to be waiting, on, <laughs> waiting for a cat to stop calling that you don't want to call. So you just have to be a bit patient. And I think the more that you breed, the longer that you breed, you don't get this I'm waiting kind of thing anymore. I'm not really waiting on any of my girls to call because I know what's going to happen. I know what's coming up. I know the timing of it and I'm all okay with it. But when you're a new breeder and you really want to get started and you really want to have those first litters of kittens, it can seem like an eternity waiting for a girl to come into season. It will happen. Um, you can do a couple of things to influence it, but they won't influence it that much. She's going to call when she's going to call. We know from you know having a seasonal breed and sometimes having a girl call in the middle of winter that they will do what they want to do when they want to do it. And that's part of the thing about breeding girls, I think. So hopefully that answered the question, what can you do to get girls to call? Um, and told you a little bit more about how you can do some things, you can influence it in a little way, but you can't really make it happen. There's no quick fix. There's no pill you can give them. There's nothing like that. So I hope you like the podcast today. Make sure you comment and like it. And I'd love for you to subscribe on YouTube. I have a lot more content on my website as well. I'm adding stuff every day. It's www.catbreedingforbeginners.com. Um, there's articles, new information. And while you're there, check out my Stud Cats mini course. People who've purchased it and completed it are loving it. And I feel so happy that their boys will benefit from what they're going to learn. And you can learn stuff too. So pop over there and have a look. Okay, bye for now. 
Thanks for listening to the Cap Reading for Beginners podcast. Make sure you visit my website at capreadingforbeginners.com for lots more information. You can sign up to my email list and stay tuned as my Cap Reading 101 online course is coming soon.